Thanks for joining me in this uh, second bytecoding session where we are just exploring a bit the crystal language and uh, building a URL status checker. If you've been following the last session by any chance, you know that we put together a very um, primitive way of, of fetching um, statuses from uh, URLs uh, all over the web. Uh, we work mostly from inside a single file. And so the plan today is to extract some of the key data structures we've been using into classes, exploring type aliases a bit, and then extracting tasks, uh, some of the tasks we define uh, into modules to make them a bit more uh, testable and make the code a bit more understandable. And finally, we'll try and make our uh, tasks uh, run periodically. As far as we got uh, with the last session, we managed to go and run a set of checks on a, on a bunch of URLs, but, but then that's it. We don't repeat the operation uh, at any point in the future. So we'll just try and make it a bit more, more interesting today. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, let's encapsulate some of the data uh, that we are dealing with in the project into into a proper class and let's see how type aliases can help us in the in the effort so just a quick review of the of the file so far we have a bunch of dependencies at the top we define a couple of uh, procs to fetch urls um, fetch data from urls and to sorry to fetch urls from a config file and to get the status of a given URL. We then define, let's say, the, the backbone of our pipeline, which is a URL stream and a result stream, and then defined a task that fetches the URLs and send them through the uh, URL stream, and then a bunch of workers that will be uh, reading from that stream and producing results into the result stream. At this point, we define some sort of a printer task that aggregates the data into a stats object and then publishes the data to terminal uh, via uh, put string and it does that by using a library that we um, explored in the last session which is called uh, tableau so we'll try to put some order in all of this one thing i mentioned in the last session is that we're doing something a bit ugly here with the with the stats object there's a lot of uh, updating that goes on. There's a lot of repetition depending on the status code returned by the HTTP call and there's um, definitely something we can do to make this uh, a bit more readable. So something we'll, we'll do and this is yep yeah, uh, something we'll do is we'll go and create a new folder in our source in our source folder. We'll call it lib. This is a convention if you explore some of the if you look into some of the most popular crystal projects you will see that many of them come with a source lib folder inside the lib folder you will have all the dependencies to your main file which is usually named after your project itself so inside the lib folder we can create a file call it stats.cr and this file will be our um, encapsulating our we will define a, a class that encapsulate this stats object so it's going to be called stats and um, what we want is we want to define to an initialize method uh, which is our constructor if you've been doing some ruby this is not new to you but then let's go back and see what what we need to do with this stats object so when you initialize a stats object Think something that helps that we need to define some sort of underlying data structure now you can see how for the time being we define stats as a hash we can probably still do something something similar so I'm just gonna say the stats object is gonna become stats new no argument will be passed in and then at initialization time we're gonna say hash equals this um, new hash and this is going to be the uh, underlying object we're going to use uh, to store our statistics 
but hopefully we'll define also a bunch of methods right so increase or if you want log success is going to be one of them so provided a url we'll go and increment the number of successes and we're going to have a similar very similar method method for logging failure same same thing so anytime a new failure uh, is is uh, get uh, pops up on the on the result stream we'll just log it for a given url and finally we'll probably need a way of extracting information from our uh, stats object and so we're going to do something like uh, we can call it get we'll see if that's a good name or not later and this is going to return a um, probably a list an array of uh, an array of objects that look a lot like success and failure uh, dictionaries or name tuple so with with that in mind what happens to our uh, set of calls of the stats object so you can see we're calling we're using stats in several places we use it once to increment the number of successes so this is going to become something like stats dot log success you can avoid the you can omit the parentheses so this is taken care of and i'm just going to leave the parentheses because we're doing some side effects so it's a it's a good habit it's just to uh, be a bit more explicit about what's going on just do stats log failure here and we're going to do the same whenever an except an exception arises i'm going to take care of this map in a second all right so current value is no longer needed because we do everything inside the object itself so let's try and recap whenever we so what we do here is we create a stats object and then whenever there's a success we log success whenever there's a failure we log failure and before we even try and compile i know that we need to remember to require the file we just created so that the main file knows where to find the stats class definition so this is going to be lib slash stats okay um i know already that we're not done because our implementation is not there but let's try and compile for a second and see what happens i'm also thinking we will probably not need the gets method get method method at all but let's see what the compiler thinks there we go so wrong number of argument for stats log success given zero it was expecting one because of course we need to pass the url to the logging function so let's do that and try again there we go so everything went okay in terms of uh, compilation up to stats.map now stats.map actually wants a um kind of stresses the fact that the object we are calling the method on is some sort of iterable or enumerable so something nice we can do uh, is we can have the stats class include the enumerable module Enumerable, enumerable modules we can have a look here is a magic module that enables um, all the functionality of that you're used to uh, when you deal with an array just by defining simply the each method so all we need to do is define an each method for the class and for that point from that point on uh, we will be able to call any sort of of method on any stats object which is pretty convenient so uh, this is a set of object uh, of uh, methods we can call on stats once we uh, define an each method and to be even more um, um, to do even uh, less on our side we'll just delegate any call to the each method to the underlying object hash and this this should work right and so i'll show you what delegate is about it's basically the idea that if anyone calls a method on an instance of the object you define the delegate on 
the method call will be forwarded to whatever object you define after the to. So for, exam for example, if you have a string wrapper, it becomes natural to delegate a set of methods uh, to the underlying string. So down case D sub empty and so on, you can call all on the wrapper method and they will have an effect it will just be forwarded to the underlying object, which is pretty convenient, right? Uh, something else I haven't done, but I'll let the compiler complain about it before we do something about it. Meanwhile, we don't need the get, is we haven't specified a type parameter for enumerable, but let, let's see, and we should, we should do that. Let's see how the compiler complains. There we go. Um, we were expecting to see some sort of uh, argument for enumerable and we didn't give any. Now, whenever we call map on um, a stats object, it's going to be the same as calling a map on the hash object. So what you know from this other example is that what uh, comes out of that is a, a block that wants what is expected to blo is a block where we have the key and the values. So we can do we know what that's going to look like. It's going to be an enumerable of tuples where one is a string, which is the URL, and the other one, well, the other one is a bit annoying because it's a named tuple of, and I think I have it somewhere here, of success, which is an integer, and then failure, which is also an integer. Now, this is all good and fine, but this is not the most readable way of um, of defining this type. It's really, really hard to, to read and it's hard to understand what's going on. So what we can do instead, first of all, let's see if the compiler is a bit happier now, if I forgot something else. Uh, there we go, expected not success. Let's go back, see what I forgot. Yeah, this looks good. We have a tuple of string and then success type int. Yeah, and it wanted a constant rather than, hmm, what have I done wrong? Let's go and see if I messed up with something obvious. Let's see how we initialize a we look at the name tuple type. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Is it maybe expect? Yes, right. So it's actually expecting us to not have any space between the two, rather than having this quite lengthy way of expressing what sort of information we have inside the enumerable, let's define an alias type, which is basically a way, a shortcut to define a, a kind of a, a longer type. So we now basically rebranded name tuple uh, success and failure into info. And now we just say we're gonna have a, an enumerable of uh, string and info. And that's a lot clearer. It's also gonna allow us to do uh, some pretty interesting stuff um, later on because we can alter the definition of info without having a big, big impact uh, on the code itself. Let's now define what log success and log failure do. So if you remember, what we want to do is we want to take our hash, go to extract the info object for, uh, for a particular URL. And let's say this is the current value. And in particular, let's say we want the success object. Okay, so this is the current success value. And then what we do is we do hash URL, this is slightly different than what we were doing the other day, equals hash URL dot merge. This is a pretty neat functionality of uh, hashes. You can merge one hash, or sorry, better, uh, a pretty nice property of name tuples because this is a name tuple. So what we can do is we can merge a name tuple with another one, just by specifying a subset of the keys, really, uh, or uh, more keys if you want to uh, change something. And then I can just say current 
plus one. Uh, does this make sense to you? So what we're doing is we are looking at the current value for success. We're then assigning to the particular uh, info object for a particular URL, uh, the value it had before, but then we're updating success with current value. And this implementation is very similar to what we will do in case of failure. So we'll see here extract current, but this time we will look at failure rather than success and just increment that one. There we go. Um, so now log success and log failure do something, which is great, or at least we think so. Let's try and see where our um, uh, program is, is uh, blocking. So let's see if we make it uh, to after the point where we log failure and success. I would argue we don't for some reason. So meanwhile, meanwhile, I see some log for name tuple. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Something interesting about name tuple that justify using it instead of uh, dictionaries, for example, is the fact that if I, by any chance, I get one of the keys name wrong. So if I say success with one a final S rather than two, and I try to compile, the compiler is going to complain. Meanwhile, we see that our program ran fine. So let's see that. Uh, and of course, we actually need to uh, run the actual program. And the moment we try and instantiate that method with a with a broken with a broken key, we can see that there's a missing key uh, error at compile time, which is uh, pretty nice because we can find out straight away and fix the the issue because before it becomes a bug in production or in, in our software. So as you can see so far, what we've done is we've defined this stats uh, class. We decided to define an info alias or a name tuple that contains success and failure. And we also include enumerable so that we don't have to define and to define methods like map or, or any on instances of stats ourselves where we can just define a niche method on the instances and that's going to be enough as if that wasn't enough we're actually using another uh, feature which is the delegate um, macro which will uh, pass any call to um, any call we specify here to a method we specify to an underlying uh, instance uh, object that is available instance variable that is available uh, to the stats uh, instance and that's again pretty neat so in three lines we have um, done quite a lot of work then we define how we initialize uh, our uh, stats object what logging success looks like what logging failure looks like and we are all set so this is how we extract functionality into a class and again one one good reason to do that could be that you want to be able to test your class in isolation to verify that the functionality you define uh, works as expected the other aspect is, if you remember from the code we had before the refactoring, it was quite, um, it was quite boilerplatey and quite um, lengthy. So it's good to actually let our users and, and uh, developers focus on what is important. We're logging success, we're logging failure. If you want to go and see what that actually does, you can go and look at the implementation of the method. If we go on with our, so now that we've done that, uh, we can move on to um, extracting some of our tasks into module 